Hello all, so here we are continuing with the second unit ecosystem of AEC2 EVS paper for the university students. So in this lecture, by, with this lecture we will be completing the second unit. So biogeochemical cycle. Biogeochemical cycles are also known as nutrient cycles. Okay, and one more thing. Kindly note down all the points that I am delivering in this lecture because all are not covered in the uh, slides. Hmm? Some I am giving you orally, they are not written in the slides. So, kindly note down all the points. Okay, you can watch the video in 0.2x speed, 2.5x speed or 0.5x speed. Huh? Note down all these points, these are really important because the here we are going to study the nutrient cycles. Hmm? Nutrient cycles is a topic which will be tough difficult for the non-science students, non-science background students. So I am giving a very simple definition for all these, uh, you have six cycles to be studied. For all these six cycles, I am giving a very simple definition, which you can easily score six to eight marks, I mean, the full marks for the essay with that. So yes, biogeochemical cycle or nutrient cycle. We know there are many necessary elements of life. Hmm? So, the six most important are carbon, water, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. We are studying these six cycles. These six cycles are studied by us in this unit. Okay. If speaking of the nutrient cycles, these are the pathways by which chemical elements and compounds move through living and uh, non-living materials. They move in a cyclic form. They repeat the movement. Okay. The movement of nutrients takes place through various food chain to different tropic levels and finally reach to detrivores or decomposers. The decomposers break down the nutrients to the soil which again taken up by the plants, then again to herbivores, carnivores, they again die. The decomposers, the organic matter in them are decomposed by the detrivores, it is stuck by the plants. So it is in a cyclic form, it repeats. The constant interaction between the biotic and abiotic components of the biosphere makes it a dynamic but stable system. So for the nutrient cycle, there are two components, not down, reservoir and exchange pool. Reservoir is a large, slow-moving storehouse of chemical elements and compounds. It is generally abiotic. Okay, that is for nitrogen, it is atmosphere. But there are biotic reservoirs as well. Speaking of carbon, the forest, the biomass of a forest is a uh, acts as a reservoir. Okay, so next is uh, exchange or we call them cycling pool as well. It is a smaller but more active portion. It is concerned with rapid exchange of chemical elements and compounds between biotic and abiotic aspects of an ecosystem. Rapid exchange, okay. So that is about biogeochemical cycle and there are two types of biogeochemical cycles. That is the nutrient cycles can be classified into two based on their reservoir. Based on their reservoir. If the so yeah, the two types of uh, nutrient cycles based on reservoirs are gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles. First we are going to study gaseous cycles. Okay. The atmosphere or hydrosphere act as the reservoir in case of gaseous cycle. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen are important gaseous cycles. Fine. Not on all these points, two components of nutrient cycles are reservoir and uh, cycling pool or exchange. And types of the nutrient cycles are gaseous cycles and sedimentary cycles. So first it is carbon cycle, right? It is relatively easy. Carbon cycle is relatively easy. Okay. For carbon cycle, there are uh, eight steps. I mean, sorry, eight stages. That is somewhat we can relate. You have, you all have might studied it in your AVS classes, EVS classes in your uh, high schools. So carbon, we all know it is an element of life. Carbon is, what to say, is a constituent of all the organic uh, compounds. And uh, carbon compounds also regulate the earth's temperature, CO2, greenhouse gas emissions and all. It also provides energy which is crucial for running the global economy. 
the carbon cycle describes the circulation of carbon in various forms between the earth's biosphere hydrosphere atmosphere and geosphere carbon is present in air as carbon dioxide and carbon is present in the surface water and ground water as carbonates bicarbonates molecular co2 and all okay first stage is carbon dioxide fixation the carbon cycle starts with algae or uh, terrestrial green plants fixing carbon dioxide through the process of photosynthesis by this process carbon dioxide and water are converted into simple carbohydrates the second step is movement along the food chain through the uh, food chain carbon is then passed on to herbivores from the green plants green plants fix the carbon dioxide using the photosynthesis then they pass it to herbivores herbivores to carnivores which convert uh, them into other forms okay next is respiration the third stage is respiration carbon dioxide is directly added to the atmosphere by animals and some other organisms as a by product of respiration we exhale carbon dioxide right fourth stage is decomposition further when plants and animals die the organic matter decomposes which releases carbon back into the atmosphere microbes that live in the soil break down the dead organic matter releasing carbon dioxide in the process the fifth stage is fossilization some dead animals and plants become buried in sediment and eventually become fossil fuels such as coal petroleum natural gas these uh, release carbon back into the atmosphere when burnt right so from petroleum diesel and petrol okay when the diesel is burnt co2 increases that is why it is too hot we know in delhi the petroleum vehicles are banned public trans not banned uh, for the not banned sorry <laughs> in the public transportation sector in delhi petroleum vehicles are not used cng is used now delhi is shifting to electric vehicles in the public transportation okay so next is uh, so fossilization we studied next is uh, the f- uptake by oceans okay it is the sixth uh, stage oceans are a major carbon sink carbon dioxide enters the ocean by diffusing into the sea surface waters and dissolving seventh stage is ocean release the ocean also release carbon back into the atmosphere when ocean surface layers warm up when it heats through the evaporation the last step is weathering eighth step over time rocks on the earth surface weather and release carbon into the atmosphere cool it is easy right and speaking of the human impact on the carbon cycle burning of the fossil fuels combustion of fossil fuels the petrol and diesel releases excess carbon dioxide into the atmosphere then deforestation because forest uh, store carbon I mean the carbon is mainly stored in trees and soils so the rampant deforestation leads to poor storing and thus the carbon get released in the atmosphere carbon dioxide get released in the atmosphere third is carbon dioxide in oceans the ocean absorbs a lot of carbon dioxide that is released from burning fossil fuels the extra co2 is lowering the oceans ph uh, ocean acidification we say that okay so that's about carbon cycle next is hydrological cycle or water cycle so there is a constant and continuous circulation of water from the earth's surface to the atmosphere and back to the earth's surface evaporation condensation precipitation again evaporation all those so that circulation of water is termed as water cycle or hydrological cycle so we are having six stages for that the first is evaporation the sun's heat provides energy to evaporate water from earth surface it is from water bodies from directly from the water bodies water getting evaporated is evaporation when the same happens so that is uh, when the water is lost to the air by plants plants also lose water to the air this is transpiration and the combination of evaporation and transpiration is named as evapotranspiration that can be by, uh, that can be from the soil 
moistened soil and all that happens so next is condensation condensation uh, the water vapor eventually condenses forming tiny droplets in clouds then precipitation when the clouds meet cool air over land precipitation occurs and water returns to the land okay so precipitation is not only in the form of uh, rain it can be in the form of sleet or snow mm -hmm. so in any of these forms water returns to the land or sea next is ground water some of the precipitation soaks into the ground some underground water is trapped between rock or clay layers this is ground water then runoff most of the water flows downhill as runoff eventually returning to the sea okay so that is all about hydrological cycle so hydrological carbon and oxygen cycle next is oxygen cycle i guess that is you know really easy after that no the nitrogen cycle and the sedimentary cycles like uh, phosphorus and sulfur are little bit tough the terms used to the uh, new for you so oxygen cycle oxygen we know it is a colorless odorless colorless odorless tasteless gas it is essentially uh, i mean it is essential for survival of living organisms on earth it makes around 21% of the air in the atmosphere movement of oxygen in various forms through atmosphere biosphere and lithosphere is known as oxygen cycle so there are five five stages first is photosynthesis green plants take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert it into glucose through the process of photosynthesis as a by product of this process oxygen is released into the atmosphere second is respiration during respiration plants and animals use oxygen and release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere third is combustion oxygen is required during combustion of fossil fuels wood plastics etc during the process carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere inorganic substances and other minerals are also oxidized by oxygen fourth is recomposition during the process of decomposition oxygen is consumed and carbon dioxide is released uh, fifth is absorption in water bodies oxygen is absorbed by water bodies through diffusion at the air water interface and through the activities of photosynthetic organisms such as phytoplankton okay so that's about oxygen cycle next is nitrogen cycle so here we are having five stages hmm? so first of all nitrogen cycle shows how nitrogen moves through both living and non living things the atmosphere soil water plants animals bacteria okay so the first stage is nitrogen fixation the earth's atmosphere contains a large amount of nitrogen gas a large amount it is abundant okay uh, nitrogen gas means n2 but it is in the form of inert it is an inert form it cannot be used directly by plants without undergoing a transformation so by the process of nitrogen fixation atmosphere nitrogen is converted into a biologically useful form so how the transformation happens like how the nitrogen is fixed it can be through lightning uh, a small amount of nitrogen can be fixed when lightning provides the energy needed for n2 to react with oxygen producing nitrogen oxide uh, and no uh, and nitrogen dioxide these forms of nitrogen then enters soil through rain or snow hmm? then let us in this then if you want you can note down the what to say so how nitrogen is fixed it is through lightning industrial process and bacteria if you want you can write the definition anyway i'll be giving the definition but if you don't want you can just write these terms no nitrogen is fixed through lightning then nitrogen is fixed through industrial process then it is fixed through bacteria like rhizobium rhizobium is in the roots of leguminous plants like pea plant and all there is a bacteria in the uh, roots of leguminous plants so when you plant such pea plant and all when you cultivate pea plant uh, automatically the roots will catch the uh, and uh, nitrogen gas in the atmosphere and it convert uh, it, it will the plants catch that that's it so that's and speaking of the industrial process the form of fixing occurs under the high heat and pressure during the during which atmosphere nitrogen and hydrogen are combined to form ammonia for the use of fertilizer and it produces ammonium nitrate okay then it is added you know 
the ammonium nitrate is added to soils and used by plants right so it is a form of nitrogen so it is not compulsory to write the definition of these three you can just write nitrogen is nitrogen fixation write the whole definition i, I said that and uh, it is fixed through lightning industrial process uh, for the production of ammonium nitrate as a fertilizer then through the bacteria rhizobium spelling r h i z o b i u m then asospirillum that is another bacteria okay so second stage is nitrification it is a process by which ammonia is converted into nitrates or nitrite by nitrosaminous and nitrococcus bacteria respectively okay nitrosaminous uh, n i t r o s o m o n a s then nitrococcus n i t r o c o c c u s then another type of soil bacteria called nitrobacter can convert nitrate into nitrite n i t r a t e nitrate into nitrite n i t r i t e so that is nitrification process by which ammonia is converted into nitrates then nitrobacter convert the nitrate into nitrite third is assimilation so by this process nitrogen uh, fixed by plants is converted into organic molecules such as proteins dna rna etc these molecules make the plants and animal tissues uh, then the fourth step is uh, ammonification living organisms produce nitrogenous uh, waste products such as urea and uric acid by the process of ammonification these waste products and the dead remains of organisms are converted back into organic ammonia by certain soil bacteria examples of ammonifying bacteria are bacillus b a c i l l u s proteus p r o t e u s uh, clostridium pseudomonas streptomyces this not the simple ones only then the last step is denitrification again it is back to the last form that is the process by which nitrates are converted back into gaseous nitrogen this is denitrification we studied it is a cycle nitrogen cycle means it is a repetition so definitely it have to be in the it have to be back in the original form denitrification occurs because in deep layers of soil oxygen is not available and the soil bacteria use these nitrogen compounds instead of oxygen examples of denitrifying bacteria include pseudomonas thiobacillus denitrificans seracea uh and all. that's it human impacts are uh, of the, on the nitrogen cycles are excessive use of fertilizers burning of fossil fuels livestock production industrial activities deforestation and all okay so next is uh, phosphorus cycle so phosphorus cycle uh, so again in the gaseous cycle methane cycle happens okay uh, and now we are but you have it doesn't have a methane cycle in your uh, syllabus so we are starting with the phosphorus cycle next so it is a sedimentary cycle that means uh, reservoir is earth crust the crust of earth acts as reservoir for sedimentary cycle sulfur and phosphorus are the example now phosphorus cycle it is a phosphorus we know it is an essential nutrient for animals and plants it is a constituent of protoplasm and dna p r o t o p l a s m protoplasm and dna it plays a vital role in cell development and energy storage atp the phosphorus uh, cycle describes the movement of phosphorus between the earth surface soil water bodies and the living organisms it is important to note that phosphorus is not present in the atmosphere it therefore lacks the atmosphere component in the cycle making the cycle endogenic okay five stages are there first is weathering uh, that is phosphorus is present in rocks and minerals and it released it is released into the soil through weathering erosion and volcanic activity second is absorption plants absorb phosphorus from the soil in the form of phosphorus ions which are essential for building dna rna atp third is consumption animals obtain phosphorus by consuming plants or other animals fourth is excretion 
when plants and animals die phosphorus is returned to the soil through decomposition and uh, excretion feces and uh, urine contain large amounts of phosphorus which can enrich the soil and support plant growth fifth is sedimentation over time phosphorus can become buried in sediment and rock formations where it can be uh, locked away for millions of years okay then human activities such as agriculture and mining can lead to excess phosphorus runoff into water bodies this leads to eutrophication and algal bloom which can harm aquatic ecosystem you know what eutrophication and algal algal bloom is the phosphorus we know it is you know when uh, when a, when a runoff water surface water runoff happens all the nutrients uh, run i mean get into the water bodies and thus the algae bloom happens the plants and the water bodies grow very fastly so they will have they will consume they will take all the oxygen available in the uh the in particular water body thus the fishes and the other microorganisms and other living organisms doesn't have oxygen the lack of or uh, what to say sunlight sunlight cannot penetrate as all these plants grow very fastly and spread very fastly sunlight cannot penetrate into the deep uh, depth of the uh, water body so it is harmful for the aquatic ecosystem so next is uh, sulfur cycle okay sulfur cycle so sulfur is a yellow odorless non metallic element it is important it is an important constituent of protein and vitamin it plays a significant role in protein and enzyme functioning in plants and animals it is found naturally in the lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere in the earth's crust sulfur occurs in the form of gypsum and pyrite oceans are the largest reservoir of sulfur oceans are the largest reservoir for sulfur sulfur occurs in the earth's crust in the form of gypsum and pyrite and uh, sulfur is present in the form of sulfate hydrogen sulfide gas and elemental sulfur sulfur cycle depicts the movement of sulfur between the lithosphere atmosphere water bodies and living organisms so next is movement in the bios uh, biosphere there are three movements okay uh biosphere okay so release of sulfur sulfur is released into soil and water by weathering rocks then most of the organisms assimilate sulfur in the organic form uptake by plants and animals only few organisms utilize organic sulfur via amino acids plants assimilate sulf- uh, sulfate and uh, from them sulfur enters into the animals via the food chain third is decomposition bacteria reduce sulfur from the dead organic matter and it is then released into the atmosphere examples of sulfur reducing organisms include uh, what to say for example green and purple sulfur uh, sorry green and purple sulfur bacteria chemolithotroph desulfovibroia vibrio chemolithotroph spelling c h e m o l i t h o t r o p h s green and purple uh, purple sulfur bacteria then d sulfo vibrio d e s u l f o v i b r i o okay next is movement of sulfur in atmosphere uh, from the lithosphere sulfur enters into the atmosphere through different routes uh, such as weathering of rocks volcanic activity soil dust industrial activity and uh, sulfur reducing bacteria activity aerosol of sea water deep sea hydrothermal vents d uh, methyl sulfide gas produced by the marine algae are the roots of sulfur entry into the atmosphere so the the oxides of sulfur react with water droplets in the atmosphere to form droplets of sulfuric acid this reaches the earth as acid rain or dry decomposition sorry dry deposition really sorry for the mistake dry deposition so that's it so for the bios i mean for the sulfur it have three uh, steps in the movement of bio movement in the biosphere release of sulfur uptake by plants and animals then decomposition in the atmosphere it enters of uh, enter of sulfur into the atmosphere then reaction with water next is uh, human impact on sulfur cycle 
burning of fossil fuels, purification of sulfur containing metallic ores releases larger amount of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide gas into the atmosphere. This increases the phenomena of uh, acid rain which is harmful to plants, animals, even monuments. We know Taj Mahal's case, right? So that's it about the cycles. Uh, repeat and watch and note all these about the cycles. Okay, that's really important and that's really what to say. I I refer to the UPSC notes for collecting these notes on uh, cycles, nutrient cycles. Okay. Next is temperature and precipitation. Have a check on this diagram. Okay. When it uh, moving towards the cold Arctic region to the tundra, temperature decreases. With the increasing altitude, temperature decreases. So, this not this, we are going to study them in detail. <coughs> this video is going to get lengthy, but I need to complete uh, one unit in two video lectures, so I have no other option but to make this video lengthy. So, types of ecosystem. Uh, in terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem okay in terrestrial there is forest grassland semi-arid uh, mountains islands and aquatic ecosystem we have pond wetland river delta marine okay forest ecosystem forest includes the area dominant by tree species it is used to refer to land where the tree canopy cover of more than 10% and area of more than 0.5 HA. Forest is uh, structurally defined by its trees, shrubs, climbers and, uh, for, and ground cover. The most natural undisturbed forests are located mainly in national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Each type of forest forms a habitat for a specific community of animals that are adapted to live in it with their uh, variation in the biotic and abiotic component the forest ecosystem are vary from each other so the non-living or abiotic aspect that is mountain hills rivers valley soil types rainfall patterns etc living or uh, biotic aspect coniferous trees in the himalaya mangrove trees in the river delta snow leopard in the himalayas and rest of india and all excess grassland ecosystem the landscape where the grasses is found abundant, abundantly uh, with annual plants. The area where the rainfall is usually poor and hence the seasonal species become dominant. The grassland setting utilized from ancient time when the cattle was being used by human. Types of grassland. The variability is due to climatic condition in India. So first is Himalayan pasture. Uh, the belt is found at high altitude area with coniferous and broad leaved forest. It is dominant with thousands colorful uh, flowering plants with numerous medicinal plants. Second is Tarai. Consists of tall grassland which grow to height of about 5 meters located in the low lying waterlogged areas. This ecosystem located in a belt of south of the Himalayan foothills. Third is semi-arid plains of western India, central India and the Deccan. They are covered with patches of thorn forest where the wolf, chingara and birds such as bustard and floricans are adopted in this arid condition. Fourth is the Shola grassland. They consist of patches on hill slopes that occur alongside of Shola forest on the western ghats, Nilgiri and Anamalai ranges. Next is desert ecosystem. It is a very sensitive ecosystem where the rainfall is found below 25 mm. The species of this ecosystem have very less chance to survive other ecosystem. The most typical example of desert ecosystem is the Thar Desert of Rajasthan. The great and little run of uh, Kutch are extraordinarily uh, specialized arid ecosystem. During monsoon season, this area attracts many aquatic birds such as duck, geese, crane and stalks. It is famous for breeding colony of the greater and lesser flamingos in our country. The runoff which is the only uh, habitat of wild ass in India. The desert ecosystem is the habitat of highly specialized insects and reptiles, you know, rattlesnakes, coral snakes, beetles, grasshopper, ant, bees and butterflies. Next is aquatic system. 
so aquatic ecosystem so there are two kinds of aquatic ecosystem freshwater ecosystem and uh, marine ecosystem freshwater means uh, in freshwater there are again it is divided into two so one is flowing water lotic uh, lotic system streams springs and rivers second is still water lendic system ponds delta wetlands in marine ecosystem it is brackish classified into again into brackish water coastal and estuaries then uh, saline water deep ocean shallows uh, coral reefs and all okay so the here the aquatic system in general is characterized by their specific biotic community and abiotic features abiotic features includes uh, the physical aspects like quality of water its clarity salinity dissolved oxygen rate of flow these abiotic aspect including beds rocks and mud influence plant and animal species composition in aquatic ecosystem next is pond ecosystem pond ecosystem is an example of freshwater ecosystem it is the simplest aquatic system which may be monsoonal or filled with water throughout the year during rainy season many food chain develop and uh, filled with many aquatic animals insects snails and forms sorry worms whereas many floating weeds and rooted vegetation started emerges from the emerging from the surface of the water the waste material excreted from animal and the dead or decaying plant and animal matter act as nutrient for aquatic plant insect worms and snails next is lake ecosystem lake is like a giant permanent pond there is no clear scientific distinction between pond and the ecosystem but most of the time lakes are bigger than ponds most of the features of lakes are uh, same as pond ecosystem lake is characterized by some specialized fish such as catfish depend on the muddy bed of the lake and they are called as bottom feeders or bottom dwellers chilka lake dal lake ular lake and all just have it not on this <coughs> next is river and stream ecosystem the biota of river and stream ecosystem are different from lake and pond ecosystem stream get large amount of nutrient uh, in the form of leaf litter fallen wood and dissolved organic matter from adjacent forest in this system uh, the water current is the major controlling factor and responsible for the variation in plant and animal species in the zone of fast current only specialized species can survive that cling to the hard bottom like snail some species of fish such as masir exist but uh, because it can swim against strong current the plankton found only where the water is deep and the current is gentle read these also I'm not these are about meanders food uh, flat plain tributaries no the path by which the snow gets melted and it is then head water uh, flow downstream rapidly or ov- often over rocks uh, as rapids and of or bluffs as waterfalls along the way smaller tributaries feed into the river adding it to, do, it to its flow then the flood plain it's relatively flat area on either side of the river that is subjected uh, for flooding as the river scours levels out the river flows more slowly and winds from side to side forming bends like meanders then salt marsh then delta read all these okay i'm not going through each and every point the video is getting really lengthy after this we have to cover there are much more ecosystems okay so next is marine ecosystem marine ecosystem of india governed by uh, arabian sea indian ocean and bay of bengal The marine ecosystem is different from other ecosystem due to salty water and variation the plant and animal species. Producer in the marine ecosystem ranges from microscopic algae to large seaweeds. The coral reef are found under the shallow sea where fish, crustaceous uh, crustaceans, starfish, jellyfish and polyps deposit corals. The marine ecosystem is facing threats due to the advancement in fishing technology. next is ecosystem services benefits derived from ecosystem the term environmental services was introduced in uh, 1970 in a report of the study of critical environmental problems which listed services including 
insect pollination, fisheries, climate regulation and flood control. According to 2006 Millennial Ecosystem Assessment, ecosystem services are the benefits people obtain from ecosystem. Okay, the MA, uh, that is Millennial Ecosystem Assessment also dele delineated the four categories of ecosystem services. Provisioning services, that is uh, products obtained from ecosystem, energy, seafood, biomedial, uh, transpiration, national defense. Then regulating service, uh, service, benefits obtained from the regulation of ecosystem process. Flood prevention, climate regulation, erosion control, uh, control of pests and pathogens. Then cultural services, non-material benefit like educational, recreational, heritage, spiritual. Now in India we worship trees, right? Uh, we worship banyan trees and all as gods. So there is a myth, I am not sure about the authenticity of this, but uh, I found it really, um, really cool, really interesting, so I am sharing it here. It is said that uh, for the Christmas event, we all know that we uh, we want to say add on decorate christmas trees right with star and all christmas trees it is said that it was a form of worshipping trees in the western culture and some areas of north america i guess that eventually became a part of the christmas celebration and came to be known as christmas tree so i just shared it here so the fourth one is supporting services Services necessary for the production of all the ecosystem services like biological diversity maintenance, nutrient recycling, uh, primary productivity and all. So these are the supporting, uh, provisioning, regulating, cultural, photosynthesis, water, food, medicine, raw materials, uh, flood control, climate regulation, cleaning water and air, pollination, education, recreation, spirituality, aesthetics, soil formation, biodiversity, habitat. Okay. So that's it. We are done with the second unit as well. And the next video, uh, we'll be going through the third unit. So as I said, not... Uh, not down the points that I have set for the nutrient cycling because they were not provided in the slides. I collected them from really good good websites. I referred to really good websites of UPSC and all and I made those notes in that way for the nutrient cycling, nutrient cycles. Okay, so kindly uh, note them and study. It is really important in the examination perspective and short essay, we can expect a short essay from the, okay. So anyway, I'll be sharing, I will be discussing the previous year question papers as well. So that's it. Thank you. Happy learning.